302, they come out of it one after the other. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, now, David Wheeler is the author of this routine. Only <coughs> wherever I said two, uh, 10, you should replace it by 2. Great excitement. 1951. Uh, the next excitement is a story that has been attributed, rightly or wrongly, to the late Stanley G G Gill. <coughs> um, good old Euclid's algorithm. Yeah? Here, we have x at least greater than zero and capital y greater than zero. And our algorithm is the following, x comma y becomes capital X comma capital Y, and uh, in doing so we establish that the greatest common divisor of X comma Y equals the greatest common divisor of the local, the lowercase X comma Y and X positive and Y positive. A relation that will be maintained by the following program. Oh, I'll leave some room. Sorry. Do if x exceeds y, then x will be decreased by y. Alternatively, if y exceeds x, then y is decreased by x. These tests guarantee that little x and little y remain positive the sum decreases, therefore the program terminates. When it terminates, both cards are false, so x is at most y and, and y is at most x, that is x and y are equal, and if x and y are equal, then we know that their greatest common divisor is, yeah, what is it? x or y? We'll print it. Yeah? Print, well, since I can't make up my mind whether to print X or to print Y, I will print their average. <laughs> <laughs> no. After the age of eight, of course, I could have printed the square root of the product, but uh, <laughs> this is, as you see, a purely additive program, so I had better print the average. Huh? Could surprise you would overflow in even more cases. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to embellish this program according to Stan Gill. You see? I introduced two new variables, u and v, and they have to be initialized. And in order not to destroy the symmetry, I will initialize them with capital X and capital Y. Having done so, we shall do something with U and V. And in order to make it nice, we say U becomes U plus V. And of course, in order not to destroy the symmetry, we will V becomes V plus U. So that is nice. But now, of course, we have to print something. What shall we print? There's no point in computing U and V if we don't print something. What do we print? Average, of course. You are dull that you don't guess this. Print. Now, 
You may wonder, of course, whether uh, u plus phi is even. It so happens that u plus phi is even. So this does not give out all sorts of difficulties with uh, truncation or round off or what have you. Question is, what, what number is printed here? Yeah? Now, this is the greatest common divisor of capital X and Y, and this prints the smallest common multiple of X and Y. Ain't that charming. Uh, but now the argument that, that it does so. See? Little u and little v satisfy the following invariant. 2 times x times y equals x times v plus y times u. That's clearly true upon initialization when this term becomes xy and this term becomes xy. Furthermore, it remains invariant during such an assignment, you see, because in this assignment, when x is decreased by y, this term changes by minus y times v. But when u is increased by v, this term changes by plus y times v. And therefore, the right-hand side does not change its value. And of course, for the other alternative, similarly, Now, upon completion, both x and both y are equal to the greatest common divisor. Divide both sides by it, and you find that 2xy over uh, the greatest common divisor of x and y is uh, u plus v. Yeah, but this is, no, oh, divide by 2, yeah? But the product divided by the greatest common divisor is the smallest common multiple of x and y. So there we are. Now, it was this totally simple argument that uh, gave me a great thrill See, because uh, if anybody doubts about the power of the notion of an invariant in proving things about programs, uh, you should show this example to him. Yeah. This is absolutely the 